So I'm going to start with the inherent rights. That's who you are. That's who I am. I am Saul Sanderson of the Cheka State Patient Band of the Cree Nation. I'll be certified and registered under the Cheka State Patient Band, Cree Citizenship Act and the Cheka State Patient Membership Code. Many of the bands and the federal government are mixing that up, that membership code with the uh, federal membership code. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about our membership code that flows from the, the Cree Citizenship Act of Cheka State Patient. So it'll identify who I am in terms of my identity, my rights, and my status. And it'll identify full benefits that I have as an individual for inherent rights, treaties, and treaty rights. But when we look at the inherent rights then, as it impacts on all of us, what are those inherent rights? First of all, inherent rights are granted to our nations and peoples by the Creator. They come from no other source, not even from the treaties. But when I look at those inherent rights and that you look at them, we have the inherent sovereignty of our nations. What does that include? Well, that includes the national powers of self-determination, the national powers of governing over all your internal, external, and international affairs by community, region, national, international. So when we look at that process of the inherent sovereignty we have, that also includes your national powers of treaty making. And we made treaties on Turtle Island, the international treaties on Turtle Island, long before the non-Indians came here. And we had tre treaties of peace and friendship, treaties of economics and trade, treaties of military alliances. So it's not new to us in terms of how we made treaties and exercised our national powers of treaty making. Now, when you identify the inherent rights, I'm talking about the inherent sovereignty of our nations. I'm talking about the inherent worldview, philosophy, traditions, customs, practices, values, and beliefs of your society and your nations. Some are a little different, but the general principles and objectives are the same. So why can't we work together and implementing that, no reason why we can't. But moving on, we have the inherent right to health, the inherent right to education, the inherent right to social development, the inherent right to child care. We have the inherent right to economics, the inherent right to justice, the inherent right and title to lands, resources, water, and jurisdiction for airspace, the inherent right for shelter, and the inherent right that we have to move forward with collectively is something that every individual, family, and membership collectively have responsibility for. So I could go on with a list of the inherent rights that we have for hunting, fishing, trapping, gathering. And when we talk about moving forward, we have to examine that framework that governs that whole field and how we will do it. So that brings me to how we do it. We've left it up to the courts, federally, provincially, internationally, and those governments to identify our inherent rights in the form of indigenous rights, aboriginal rights, native rights, Indian nations rights. Now, we need to take hold of that. It's our responsibility and duty as nations and peoples of our nations to identify them, formally list them properly, the full scope of our inherent rights and our inherent sovereignty. And when we do that, again, we define them. 
how, based on our nation's worldview, philosophy, traditions, customs, practices, beliefs, and values, what are we doing? We're allowing the feds and the province and the ter international community to define them for us. And how are they defining them? Indigenous rights, Aboriginal rights, and both those terms don't come with the recognition of rights. The term indigenous was coined in 700 BCE. Now that's centuries ago. And the, na the nations, the empires, and the nations today use that term and put different definitions to it from generation to generation for whatever purpose they need to use it, they put their own definition to it. So today it means that federally, the term indigenous includes Indian, Métis, and Inuit. When we have our own distinct sovereignty of our nations, we have our own distinct philosophy, worldview, traditions, customs, practices, beliefs and values. But the general principle of defining those inherent rights under our jurisdiction and laws is what we need to focus on. Collectively, as again, they all impact on our nations, on Turtle Island, not just here in Canada. So a lot of the code of silence issues that I'm talking about will also impact internationally with the original peoples of the world. And they'll recognize how it does if they see and view this, this video. So when we move ahead then, you've now listed them, you've now defined them based on your own worldview, your own philosophy, your own traditions, your own customs, your own practices, your own beliefs and values. But there's another task that we have collectively, individually and collectively. I'm talking about our people and our communities and bands of our nations. That is identifying the duties and responsibilities that we have individually and collectively for each of those inherent rights of our inherent sovereignty and all the other inherent rights by sector and the inherent title to lands, resources, water, and jurisdiction for aerospace. We need to know what those duties and responsibilities are as individuals and collectively as families and societies of our nations by community and by nation. Again, we are not doing that. So that's why it's a major code of silence. Why aren't we doing it? The Federal Human Rights Act, the National Human Rights Act, only recognizes individual rights. The elders will tell you our collective rights reinforces and recognizes individual rights. But individuals and families of our communities have the same responsibilities and duties to implement those inherent rights that I'm talking about. So now you've listed them, you've defined them, you've identified your duties and responsibilities associated with each of those rights, including your inherent sovereignty and your form of government under your own worldview, philosophy, traditions, customs, practices, beliefs, and values. So what are your plans and strategies now to implement the inherent rights to education, the inherent right to economics, the inherent right to self-determination, your inherent right to justice, your inherent rights and titles to your land resources, your, your water and your jurisdiction for airspace? In fact, what are your plans for all of your inherent rights by sector?